to the bride and the groom. Congratulations. That ain't called. No, not yet. A couple of minutes. A few thank yous. Oh. I'd like to thank Whirlow Brook Hall for this beautiful venue. Thank you. And then obviously there's the bridesmaids. They look absolutely gorgeous. And then there's the page boys. How good do they look? Yeah. Yeah. They look absolutely brilliant. And then obviously I thank you all as well. Then I'd like to thank Jess for sorting Rebecca's endo out. Yeah. I've heard, with what I've seen and heard, I think you had a beautiful time. And how you got David Beckham to fly out there, I don't know. <laughs> I know people. So, but then there's Grant. Got in Josh's stag do well. Quite a bit entertaining, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 For someone who don't like stag do's. One night, well, I could do a little episode of EastEnders. People were going missing and getting kidnapped. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, I apologise for that now, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> but there's also one other person I'd like to thank on the stag do, and that's Darren. Now, he shared a room with me and Anthony, but obviously he's the party animal. So he was the last one in all time. So the first night he come in, we well laid in bed, he goes straight to his bed. His bed's got the window above him. He opens the window full. <laughs> a gale's coming blowing in. Then at the bottom of his bed, he's got a bedside table. So he lays the opposite side to his bed, and he puts his phone on the table, sets it up, full volume, and starts playing a documentary. <laughs> the, docu the documentary was about a team in Canada rescuing a family at Otters. <laughs> right? It lasted an hour. <laughs> and I thought, after that, I thought, thank God I can go to sleep now. <laughs> Ten seconds later, it repeated itself. <laughs> All the way through the night, I listened to that documentary. <laughs> so the next morning, I had a word with him. He says, oh, sorry, Carl, I didn't know. What's he doing the next night? He comes in, goes to the window, opens it up again. Puts his phone on the bedside table and plays the same document. <laughs> <laughs> All the way through the night. So I thank you for that, Dana. <laughs> right. And uh, we've always had a saying, lads, when we go away, what happens away stays away. Yeah. Right? So Anthony, you've still got two jackets and a phone somewhere in Amsterdam. <laughs> <laughs> Right, in a minute I'm going to make a toast, right, but before, I'm just hoping you've all got a drink, but before that I'd like to say a few things to you two. Rebecca, there's one thing I can always remember about you, is your Marmite, your pot noodles, your bacon. Crispy bacon. Yeah, and when I used to come home from football, Saturday tea times, or Sunday afternoon, I'd got my legs covered in mud, I used to go in the bath and she used to say, Dad, can I come and wash your legs? So, <laughs> I used to say, yeah, of course you can, love. <laughs> Which I did. But we eventually had to put a stop to it when she was 14. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I'm just so grateful that you've given us two beautiful grandchildren, yeah. Sonny yeah. and Nolan. Yeah. And obviously, I think we all know there's another one on the way now. <laughs> So I'm just glad that through your hectic lifestyle, you've actually found time to tie the knot. <laughs> but seriously, Josh, I think you should be thinking about tying the knot in something yes. else. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> right, I'm just going to... I'd like to do another toast now. There's two people who sadly are no, with a, are no longer with us now. And there's a lot of people in here who deeply love them. And Josh, Rebecca, I know they will be looking down on you out there now with the biggest beaming smiles on their faces. So can I raise a toast to Gary and Christine? Gary and Christine. Cheers, Carl. Nice one. Cheers, mate. Nice one. Oh, it's just, I'm nearly, I'm nearly at the end of it now. I hope you all enjoy the rest of the evening and if anybody does want to venture to the bar and buy me a drink I won't be offended 
Okay. Right. He can't reach it. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers. Hey. Right. It's actually crayon, it's alright. Right. Right, I'll apologise first because it won't be as good as calls, but right. just want to thank everyone for coming today uh, to join me, my wife, and my beautiful children. Um, we just raised the glasses to me, Dad and Christine, but I'd just like everyone to do it again. Gary and Christine. Right. For all of you who didn't know me before, or don't know me that well, I'm actually quite one in this relationship. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, my and Bex's story started about eight years ago. Um, funny enough, it started with meeting two men. Not like that, though. Right. Bucky and Joe met in a club called DQ in town. Um, basically blagged them and told them that I could play guitar and ended up joining a band. So as years went on, we played gigs up and down the country. And then one night, I played Auto Academy in Sheffield. And then Bex obviously saw us on stage. And um, as you can imagine, just felt straight low straight away. <laughs> but seriously, not, or seriously not, over the years, uh, we've had, we had a good, good few nights with band and that. But the best thing to come out of it all, uh, we're beautiful kids and the wife, Bex. I love her to Bex. Um, can't read me right now. Me and Bex has always liked to test his relationship. Like, like the time I uh, had a fight with a barbecue in the garden and got arrested. <laughs> or the time we went to Spain to a music festival where I asked her to marry me in Valencia. And when we got to the festival, then um, I made a walk two hours through a country park trying to find a hotel in 20 degree heat. <laughs> so that was probably his most testing time in the relationship, to be fair. We got through that without arguing as well. So, Only just. Yeah. So, but seriously though, Bex is the kindest, most loving person for me in, my, in my life. And we're all lucky to have her, especially me and kids, back at home. We'd, we'd be lost we are, so. I'm off the next. Right, so, that's, that, that, that's about it now. Uh, so, finally, um, just to say thank you to a few people. So, bridesmaids, you all look lovely today. Um, we've got you some presents. Cool. Right, drag it out a bit, give presents out. Right. Uh, Isabel. Oh, sorry. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Here you go, ladies. Well, well, thank you very much. For thank you. Um, page boys, where are Page boys. Are oh, they playing in um, games? Give them a play after. Try to drag it out a bit more. Um, <laughs> Right. Um, special thank you to Best Man. Did a good job, even though like, I just <laughs> gave him loads of bollocks while we were <laughs> for about two months trying to organise it before and that. Uh, definitely head for that beer bike. <laughs> we didn't, didn't quite make it on that. Um, so big, big thank you to, to Ryan today as well. He's uh, actually a helicopter pilot. He's, uh, <laughs> he's come all the way from Kazakhstan, not just for today, but he came for Stagda as well to Kazakhstan. So a big thank you to Ryan. Yeah. Oh, here we are. <laughs> right. You've got a present here, Pop. Where's Aiden? Oh, oh, that's oh yeah, where's Nolan? That's for Nolan. 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 Present. Present for you. For you, Pop. There you go, mate. What is it? 
Courtney, let's go. What have you got, Sunny? Minecraft! Really? I've got Minecraft now! You big boy. Stealing from me a bit here, lads, to be fair. I'm trying to do a bit of speech. Right, anyway, so a big, big special thank you today to my mum, um, Deborah, and Colin. Obviously, they've, they've contributed to help us out to, so we could have today, and they've been really able to make way out. So, a big thank you to you. Um, Have we missed anyone else, Bex? No, but you've got flowers for mum. Right, yeah. So we've got flowers for you. <laughs> right, mum, that's for you. I can't get on that. <laughs> that's for you, mum. You haven't got a big enough one. Thank you. Very gorgeous. Big up. Pebs for you, Mum. That's awesome. <laughs> If my mother's day, Rebecca, you remembered this year. No, we haven't got it all for Mother's Day. And that's it, really. So thank, thank you, again. Uh, thank you, everyone, again for coming. And uh, meet Raffles is on at nine. See you <laughs> Decade-long best friend and bad influence to the bride, and eight-year-long third wheel to the bride and groom. <laughs> when I first met Becky, she was absolutely convinced that one day she would marry the one and only David Beckham. <laughs> but when she finally realised that wasn't going to plan, she set her sights on an indie rock and roller, a bass player to be exact. And when that also didn't work out, she settled for a plaster. <laughs> The first time I met Josh, I was on a warning to be on my best behaviour. But just a few hours later, Becky was the one sat in his kitchen in a monkey mask. <laughs> the second time, we both came out of his friend's bathroom wearing plasters like Nelly, singing hot in here. And I think it was at this point he realised that we're not normal. <laughs> As you can imagine, me and Bex have shared a lot of memories along the way. But as it's a wedding day, I didn't think it would be appropriate to embarrass her too much. So I decided not to tell you all about the times that she fell over in her ridiculous heels before we'd even made it to town. All the times that she'd be so drunk she'd have to tactical bomb before cracking open another cider. <laughs> or even the time we found a shoe in the street after plug, took it home with us yes. and she tried to sell it to the taxi driver for a fiver. <laughs> so yeah, I thought I'd just tell you all one of my favourites instead. Christmas Eve, yeah. quite a few years ago, we went out in fancy dress. <laughs> Through absolutely no fault of my own, I wasn't allowed in the crown at Answorth. <laughs> <laughs> Becky went in and had come up with a brilliant plan to sneak me in. She was going to prop open the fire door around the back with a shoe. Only she never told me this was the plan. <laughs> By the time she'd done all this, I was already in a taxi on my way to the weather bay, where nobody else was in fancy dress. <laughs> <laughs> Even after all of our very intoxicated times together, these two still gave me the greatest honour in asking me to be Sonny and Nolan's godmother. Two beautiful little boys who I love with all my heart, just as they all love my little diva. It's safe to say I can't wait to meet baby number three. Anyway, back to the couple we're all here today for. I always remember getting a text one day while they were in Manchester for a weekend. I could sense the excitement from it being in all capitals. She told me how she'd seen Frankie Ficosa down the road and before chasing after him in a flip-flops for a picture, she looked at Josh who simply said, go on. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if even he knows this, but Becky told me this is the moment that she knew he was the one. <laughs> All jokes aside now, before I wrap this up, I'd just like to say to my bestie best day, you could have at least made an effort on your wedding day. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gents and Josh, if you would please join me in a toast to their lovers, husband and wife, to Becky and Josh for the rest of their life.
Oh. <laughs> I brought a few notes out, but it, and it just said Josh sucks over and over again, so it's pointless for reading that. Uh, no, just that big thank you for everyone uh, coming tonight. It's been an absolutely fantastic day. It's been good to see the old family and a new family as well. I've, I've not met half of Becky's family before, so it's you know it's, it's been weird to see so many dwarfs in one place at one time. <laughs> <laughs> Bride and groom! <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's always difficult to sort of build on what everyone else has said. Um, just wanted to sort of touch briefly on, um, you know, past, present and future, how Josh and Becky have met and where they are now and where they're going. As you know, uh, they met at O2 Academy uh, eight years ago. Uh, Josh were <coughs> in a Liam Gallagher tribute band at the time. <laughs> <laughs> Becky were selling gravy on the uh, <laughs> side. Uh, yeah. Instantly fell in love. You know, for Josh, that were a big thing because he'd found someone who, who loved him more than he loved himself at the time, which is <laughs> <amazing>. <laughs> you know, Fast forward to present day, they've got two wonderful kids, at least one of them is. <laughs> and uh, now, so now we're a beautiful bride as well. <laughs> wow. um, looking forward, they've got another kid or two on the way, you know. We'll see what happens. But it's, it's looking to be a bright future, you know. We can only hope for the best that, you know, as, as time goes on, Josh will lose all his hair and uh, he'll become a fat version of Homer Simpson. <laughs> <laughs> um, one thing I, I wanted to do uh, tonight, um, you know, we've got two people that aren't with us. Um, one of those people um, did something at a wedding years ago that I absolutely loved. It was a toast at bride and groom, but in the style of a Mexican wave. So, we can start at that end, work from that table all the way across, all the way that way, and finish it off, and that'll sort of finish, it, finish everything off for us. So, ready? You go and start it. I've got them. You start one for it. Bride and groom. 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 Bride and <laughs> uh, but you know, you've got a lot to put up with now. You know, you're outnumbered. Two kids, another kid on the way, and an even bigger kid. So, good luck to you. <laughs> Give me all you. It's all good, man. That's it, go away. You <laughs> <laughs> didn't kiss your brother. Yeah, can we have some music on now? It's getting awkward. It's getting awkward.